Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the NFL Gambling Picks Podcast for week number three. Turn that sweet music down. That's right. NFL Gambling Picks. Let's jump in. Week number three. I went two and four last week. Not good. Went two and three the the first week. I profited negative $109.09 last week. You went two and two. Lost $18.87. On the season, I am four and seven at minus $167.21. That is negative 3.54 units. You are four and six. You have lost $188.44 at minus 3.77 units. We're going to get it turned around this week. And you know why? Because our buddy Steve F. went nine and one in the Pick'em contest over at winningcureseverything.com. You can also go nine and one, 10 and 0, 8 and 2, whatever it is. You can win this thing. I'm telling you, there's only like 100 entrants, whatever. Now, we can have 500 entrants, whatever it is. Everybody go over and make sure you enter the Pick'em Contest. It's free. Put in an email. Put in your name. It takes a couple of minutes. You just click through the website. Pick the teams you like, the uh, teams you don't like, etc. College games and NFL games. Uh, but, yeah, Steve gave me hope, man. I think we're going to get this turned around. I think it starts this week. I think, I think I feel real good about this. I also feel real good because... I was down at Tunica last week. After we had made these picks, I went down, actually hit some other games that I didn't have on this list, but Tunica has given me life. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. They got six incredible sports books and a whole bunch of other stuff going on. When I was down there on Friday night, you know who was playing down there? Who? Joe Nichols and Diamond Rio. Oh, wow. man. Did you go see him? I did not go see him. I actually went into the into the sports bar and sat and watched Washington State and Houston. But That's a good game. But I could go see Joe Nichols. Yep. You know, Sonny and 75. You know, I'm all over it. All over it. All right. So go to tunicatravel.com. Check out all the amazing things they got going on. Their sports books are incredible. We are down there frequently. Go check it out. You can subscribe, of course. If you want to do that, you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe, leave some comments, tell us what you like, what you don't like, tell us what your picks are for this week, because Lord knows we probably need some help. Put them in the comment section, tell us what you like, what you don't like about the show, just be kind. We got feelings, guys. We got feelings. You ready to jump into this thing? Yep. How many you got? Five. I got five. There we go. You want to start us off? You let me go first. I never get to go first. <laughs> It's because I got so many damn picks. You got like 10 bets every week. All right, roll on. My first public play I'm going to make, I don't like public plays. It it goes against everything that I believe that is right, good, and holy with sports gambling. But I'm making this one because I believe in Russell Wilson, and I believe that we have a new Seahawks team. And so I am laying the four points to the New Orleans Saints. At minus 110 for $50. All of mine are going to be 50 bucks. I'm going to make it easy for you. All the paperwork you have to do. These 50 are all, bucks at minus 110. All minus 110. I can get down with that. Uh, I also have the Seahawks. Hey, there we go. That's uh, that's minus four at 50 bucks. Minus 110. Seahawks, nine and one straight up. Eight, one and one against the spread as a home favorite of less than a touchdown in their last 10. Uh, the Seahawks, last 10 as a home favorite in September. 10 and 0 straight up, 7 and 3 against the spread. Uh, they liked playing at home early in the season. Uh, no, they did not look good against the Bengals. I think they want to remedy that. I think Teddy Bridgewater did not look good last week. They did not get to go back home and work on anything. They have tried to uh, work on Bridgewater and give him a more vanilla offense, uh, it's something that he can run a little easier. And they've had to do it all on the West Coast place where maybe you're not super comfortable. They never went back to New Orleans after the Rams game. Uh, I, I like I like the Seahawks here. I think Russell they're going to cover the four. good at football. Very good at football. That's, I mean, I, very I'm, good I'm, at football. I'm betting on my guy. So I'm, I'm with you. I've got 50 bucks on, on that at minus 110 as well. All right, I'll move to the next one. 
my next two picks are going to have a lot in common. And they're basically, I don't think either one of these teams are good. And the majority of the country, I think they're really good. I'm going to go down to Indianapolis. Okay. My Colts, looking good. I think they're better than people think they are. I don't think that they're hurt too bad by losing Andrew Luck. And the Falcons, who I watched on Sunday Night Football, look like crap. <laughs> I mean, they just did. If Julio Jones wasn't the absolute freakishly freakish monster that he is, it's a garbage football team. They don't, look right. good. they don't look good at all. They will come to Indy, and I don't know that Indy's going to be able to contain Julio because I don't know anybody can, but, but let him get a few just like everybody else lets him get a few and then shut everyone else down just like everybody else has kind of done so far. That's true. And, and Matt Ryan is containable. He's going to give you a couple of picks. That's what he's done so far. Yeah. And, and the Colts' offense, oh, man, this offensive line likes to bully people around. That they want to play in a phone booth. They are. They they want to push you around. They want to hurt you, and and they're nasty. They're good. They're really good in the trenches. They are so nasty. Which is mean whoever plays quarterback for them doesn't have the weight of the world on his shoulders. They can all be successful. Yeah. I like this Colts team. It's minus one and a half. Man, I I I feel like I'm out on an island with the Colts and the way I feel about them right now. But dude, I. I think this team has came together behind the we just lost our, our leader and, and now we don't have a leader. We're just all in this together. And we're all going in the same direction. And I, I'm buying in. And it could be fool's gold and the Falcons go in there and beat their butt. But I need to see the Falcons beat somebody. Because they beat the Eagles. I mean that makes sense. That makes sense. How much you got on that one? 50 bucks on all these, minus one 50, team. Oh, 50 on all of them. 50 on all of them, make it easy on you. 50 on all of them, minus one team. Okay. Next one up for me, and we're going to make this simple. The Titans have owned the Jaguars. Minus one and a half on Thursday night, which is when this is actually coming out. Titans minus one and a half at the Jags. Thursday, Jacksonville won five and one against the spread, one and six straight up against the Titans. In the last seven appearances, I, I think the Titans are disgusted by how they played against the Colts. They always come out pissed off after they play the Colts because they always look like trash against the Colts. Jaguars, rookie quarterback, coming back home. They probably should have had that win against the um, against the Texans last week. I like Gardner Minshew, but man, in this spot... Like, I, I think Derrick Henry goes crazy. I think they get the ball to A.J. Brown. I think Marcus Mariota shows up. He always seems to against Jacksonville, even when he doesn't, even when he's not playing. I mean, Blaine Gabbert beat him last year. Like, you know, like it, there's just all sorts of things going on here. The Titans love this spot. I'm putting $150 on at minus 110. And, man, I hope I hit that thing on Thursday night. <laughs> I feel good about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be putting it down. But, man, I think I think the Titans have the Jags number. I think the Jags, with all the chemistry stuff going on with Jalen Ramsey, uh, you know, I think I think there's just some stuff going on there. They may not be fully focused on this. And short week after traveling to Houston, yeah, I know you're going to be at home. But, man, let, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Titans minus one and a half. Second half of that Sunday night debacle. I'm, the Lions are going to Philadelphia. Phillies played two games. First game, they did everything they could to try to give it to Washington. Washington, I don't believe, is a good football team. No. They played like crap for the first half. Now, they came out, second half, played like gangbusters. But they go down to Atlanta, and they try to give that game away. They do successfully give the game away. Best quarterback on the team was Josh McCown, and he got pulled because... Carson's their guy, and, and it didn't matter that McCown had led them all the way down the field, and they were in the red zone, and they were about to score. They pull him. They put Boy Wonder back in because it's his team. I understand that, and he th makes three bad throws, misses everybody, and they settle for a field goal. They end up losing this game. Yeah. Now, they got Detroit coming to their town. Detroit is not a great football team, but they are a tough football team built a whole lot like the Colts have been rebuilt. Tough offensive line, tough defensive line. 
I think that means Detroit is going to be close in every football game that they play. I got six and a half points. In the NFL, you got almost a touchdown. It's a lot. Yeah. And and I'm just going to say, I, I don't know that Detroit can win the game, but I, I don't know that they can't win it either. I don't you, know. You I, I need to see the Eagles actually play somebody and, and play real well. Give me Give me 60 minutes of football. But right now, I'm going to take all these points. Lions plus six and a half for $50. I think I like it. Next one up for me, I'm going to roll to Buffalo. Now, I know that this is your boys. You started this. That's right. I don't like the Bengals at all. I think week one in Seattle, maybe caught, caught the Seahawks sleeping a little bit, maybe. You know, opening of the season, you know, get the jitters out a little bit, maybe something like that. Uh, or maybe just knock some rust off. But the Bengals showed up back at home and got it handed to them by the 49ers. The Bills, six-point favorite, less than a touchdown. They're at home, eight and two straight up, six, three, and one against the spread, their last 10 as a home favorite. And that's with a not terribly good football team for a long time. But they cover. I think they're they good cover as home now. favorites. I think they are a real good uh, uh, home team now. They're a real good team, just period. I would say uh, they've got two wins, two road team, two road games. Yeah, uh, Sean McDermott, fantastic coach. He's got this defense playing lights out. Uh, Josh Allen, surprisingly good. I mean, they they got playmakers all across the field. They, their skill position is significantly upgraded with guys that you just don't even know. Yeah, and it's or guys that used to be somebody and are now, yeah. you know, somebody. Like Frank again. Gore, like what? Well, I mean, that, that dude scored a touchdown last week. Like, yeah, good gracious. Um, yeah, I'm I'm surprised by this Bills team. I like them a lot here. I don't like Cincinnati. I think they will be out coached, out played, out physical, out everything here. I think they're going to have a tough time scoring this week. Uh, give me the Bills minus the six for fifty bucks at minus one ten. A team that's a lot like the Bills. San Francisco 49ers won their first two games on the road. Crossing the country, playing one o'clock games, and and they go in, they come out 2-0. and They get to go yep. home opener. That place is going to be excited. They're going to be rocking. Hey, man, we haven't had a team this good in a long time. Things are looking up in San Francisco. Who do we have coming in? The lame, limping Steelers. 0-2. Lost their quarterback, lost the, the best leader on the team. Ownership, everybody said Big Ben is our leader. We're all behind him. Well, now he's gone. Who's leading him now? Mike Tomlin? Mike Tomlin hadn't led him in a while. I, you know, I don't know what's going on there. I think there are problems in Pittsburgh. And I think that uh, Kyle Shanahan has things finally rolling in, in San Francisco right now. I have been waiting for several years since Kyle got this head coaching job to see this Kyle Shanahan offense and to see this team be able to play at the at the way he has envisioned it all along. Now, it's taken a couple of years to get it there because they were real bad, and they had to build the line. They had to get some skill players. They got Jimmy G. Jimmy G got hurt. Everybody looks healthy. Everybody looks really good. It's a, it's a touchdown game. It's six and a half points. That's that's not insignificant, but I really really like this 49ers team a lot. Okay, okay, fifty bucks on that. I got the other way. I got the Steelers at plus seven earlier, so if it is six and a half, just buy the the half point. Take it to seven. Touchdown means a whole lot in the NFL world, so buy it back to seven if you got to. Um, but I got it at plus seven. At minus 110, I'm putting 50 bucks on it. San Francisco, 1-15 and 15 against the spread in their last 16 as a home favorite. The Steelers look pretty good with Mason Rudolph. I think they still got playmakers. I think this defense is looking to make a point here. I think they want to come out and play for something, right? I want They, they want to come out and show that they weren't just Ben Roethlisberger. I don't know that they win the game. I don't, I don't think that Ben Roethlisberger was a seven-point difference quarterback. I know that that's kind of weird to say. I get that. 
But this bunch likes Mason Rudolph. Like this team really likes Mason Rudolph. And I think that they'll play for him. I think that they will play for Mike Tomlin and that bunch. Um, I, think I this just is don't a, know how good this team is. That offensive line was supposed to be good. Not good first two weeks. Had, that defense yeah. was supposed to be really good this year. Everybody, that's all and the all-season talking about. look great. That, they're not good. They're not good. That's, we'll we'll, that's we'll it. see, but it seems like it is too easy of a spot to have the 49ers after Ben Roethlisberger goes out and gets hurt. Seven, right. seven points is a lot. It is a lot, and that's why I'm saying I'm taking the dog here. Okay. So I, I'll roll with the Steelers on this one. 50 bucks at minus 110. Uh, let's see. What have we got? You got you got one more, and I got I've one got more. got one more. All right, go, go right ahead. My last game, I'll be at this game. I'll be in attendance. The NFL has not come to a primetime Sunday night, Monday night football game, game of the week, in a long time. Now they're coming to Cleveland. It's about damn time. <laughs> Cleveland got the rust knocked off a little bit last week against the Jets. Not a good football team. Fully understand that. And they have the NFC champs coming to town in the Rams. This is a really well-coached team. Man, they are good at every aspect of the game. Yes. Browns struggle on the offensive line. Somehow, some way, they can't get the offense to seem to continue to roll. They can't put drives together. I have no earthly idea how. This is going to happen. But I believe in my brownies. I believe with all that I have that things happen on prime time that just don't happen at other point in times in the games. They just don't. Cleveland is going to be crazier than they've been in a long time. They're going to show up. This will be the most hostile environment the Rams play in the entire season. Okay. I, I think can... the Browns taking plus two, uh, plus three. Yep. And... I think the Browns can win the game. 50 bucks at minus 115? Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. I, I got one more here. And this will wrap us up, uh, of course, before TJ hops in. The Panthers traveling to Arizona. The Cardinals are plus three right now. Um, and it was pulled down from some boards because they don't know if Cam Newton's going to play, et cetera. I don't think it matters here. 50 bucks. At minus 120, the Panthers are 1-5 and five straight up and against the spread. Uh, the last six as a road favorite, 1-9 and nine straight up, 2-8 and eight against the spread in their last 10 games overall. The Cardinals have shown that they could score. Look, I think the Ravens are a significantly better football team than the Panthers. And they went in and they hung with the Ravens. I don't think that Carolina can score the way that the Ravens can score. And Arizona was able to, to hold the Ravens down a little bit. I like Kyler Murray here. I like the, the Cardinals looking to get a big-time home win. They they are, what, 0-1-1 right now? This is where they get the win. I got 50 bucks on them at plus 3. I got 25 bucks on them at the plus 120 because it's always better to have the points just as insurance, right? But I, I think they win the game outright. So plus 120, 25 bucks. Give me that all day. That pays out what, 30 bucks? I'm in with it. As always, you go over to winningcureseverything.com, go up to the gambling picks section. You can see our picks for the week. You can see what we've done for the entire season. You can see what we've done for the three years that we've been doing this before this season. We're in our fourth football season. We've been fairly successful. Pretty successful, really. Um, I mean, Chris hit. 62% last year. That's ridiculous. Year before that also. Yeah. sixty Over 60% 60 in two straight years against the spread. That's nuts in the NFL. So go check it out for yourself. Go enter the Pick'em Contest. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcast, hit subscribe. Leave a nice review. Leave some comments. Share the show out with your buddies. All that wonderful stuff. We appreciate you guys for watching. We're going to get into, right now, an interview with our good friend from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, Mr. T.J. Reeves, the Tampa Bay Bucks sideline reporter. He's going to talk about some of these NFL games as well. All right, we've got T.J. Reeves here, Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find him on Twitter, at Guy. T.J., let's talk NFL. Let's talk, first off, 
a big time underdog last week. Your Tampa Bay Buccaneers go into Carolina, get the big win. And, you know, a touchdown underdog, whatever it was, six and a half point underdog, come out with a straight up victory. Chris and I were looking at the NFC South odds right now, and mm. I, I just want to get you know your take on this right now. Could I interest you in plus twelve hundred? A ten dollar bet will win you one hundred twenty bucks. On the if, Bucks, on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this division right now, the way it looks, I I, I love it because it's. I mean, what a difference a week makes because Cam Newton. Uh, I saw it at field level. I don't know what's going on with him. I mean, one of the things I observed, guys, and we'll see if this gets better. That surgically repaired shoulder. He looks like he is laboring to throw the ball hard down the field. I'm not saying he can't get zip on it, but he's having to get some momentum, a little arse into the throws. He's he's having to wind it up a little bit. So I'm concerned about the shoulder. Uh, He didn't look great. He had 26 incompletions. I'm more concerned about him all as encompassing. I I thought after that Bucks game, I thought he was done. Like, well, done. I don't know that he finishes the season, and I don't know that he plays football after this year. Interesting. Wow. Talk about going out there. Uh, I, I, you know, look, I, he's not mobile, and he no. had 26 incompletions. So you got Carolina, and I know they're a road favorite against Arizona, but my Buccaneers, huge effort to go in there and find a way to win. Defense showed up large. Bucks have only allowed one touchdown on defense in the first two games. So you're right. I mean, with Breeze injured with the injured thumb in the Rams game, with Cam Newton and what's going on with him, uh, yes, Atlanta won, but they had to hang on Sunday night to win. The South will be wide open. I was going to say, I'm not sold on this Atlanta team at all, at all. That was an ugly game by both teams. Neither one of them wanted to win that game. The Falcons threw three interceptions, tried to give it away. I, I think the most complete team is the Saints, but without Breeze at the helm, I think you guys got just as much of a fighting chance, and everybody else has terrible odds. Yeah, I would. I'm. I'm gonna take plus twelve hundred and just see what happens. I trust oh, Bruce Arians Ruth. over everybody else. Well, I trust Todd Bowles over everybody. I mean, that's... and remember, and remember, in uh, in uh, almost pattern form, it always seems to be a team that finished last that turns around and wins the division. The Bucks were the last place team last year, but I mean, year after year after year, yeah, that was a NFC trend for a while. Being, yeah, it was like five years in a row. The last place team won the division. So maybe it is the Buccaneers' year-long season. Said that last week on the show. 14 more games to go. Breeze will be back healthy. Maybe Cam Newton gets it together. There's going to be some knockdown, dragout games. I still would not be surprised if two NFC South teams are again in the playoffs, the division winner, and one of the wild card teams is a South team. Let's see how it shakes out. Now let's talk about a, uh, a couple of big games in the NFL before I, I get some leans and, and what we're looking at on Three Dog Thursday for uh, for this week. Uh, first game, of course, the biggest game of the weekend, the Ravens, a seven-point dog at the Chiefs. Uh, that line may have actually moved down to like six and a half. Either way, seven point, six and a half, whatever it is. Uh, Ravens, you know, that's a pretty big number against a good defense and a really explosive offense this year. It, is there a lot to Lamar Jackson against Patrick Mahomes here, you think? I think there is. Has anybody, I'm, I'm calling it out on your show, has anybody heard from Bill Polian, by the way, off of ESPN, <laughs> the former Colts and Bills executive, who wanted Love Lamar it. Jackson to be a wide receiver at the Combine a year and a half ago? Has anybody heard a peep from him at this point? I'm not saying Lamar Jackson is going to be one of the all-time greats and a Hall of Famer, but he has silenced the critics and the doubters with the way that he's thrown the football. Yeah. And this is a fascinating game. And look, I went against the Chiefs on Three Dog Thursday last week. If only I could have just kept the first quarter with the Raiders up 10 nothing. Then they played the second quarter, and Mahomes put four touchdown passes on them. Uh, it was just a wild uh, second quarter turn of events there. And Kansas City is so explosive, even without Tyreek Hill. This will be this will be a fun game, and that is a game I'm looking at, but Kansas City at home for the first time in this game. I don't know about the Ravens there going into Arrowhead. So so I, I gotta tell you this, just because you don't, we haven't been friends that long, TJ. Uh my my boy sitting next to me, he was one of those guys that were saying he should run 
the 40 <laughs> as a receiver, and he should try out. And Gary's been doubting him all this time. Even after week one, he was, Gary. oh, he's just a dolphin. No, 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 no. I've, I've been singing his praises. You're talking to a guy that grew up hating, despising the Ravens. And now right. he is building that bridge. He's torn down that wall. I am all in on Lamar Jackson. Gary, Gary, can I just help you here? The guy is getting better throwing the football, and he's only 22 years old. Yeah, Let me I, say again. I understand. He's 22. I know. Yeah. I know. And they, they have tailor-made that <laughs> offense for him. They they gave him speed on the outside. They gave him a the perfect tight end for this offense. And they're, they're still letting him run and, and move around and, and move the pocket, right? But – He's, the, the he's reason eight that I and was, two as a starter since he took over last season, including the playoff loss. The he's reason, eight and two now as a starter, that's, so that's looking that's good. That's fine. That's great. The reason that I was doubting him is every time he went up against a better defense, like a, a really good defense when he was in college, his accuracy was complete crap. He was throwing picks to every. I mean, against Mississippi State, against Kentucky, against Clemson. Again, I, I'm he, telling that, you, that Clemson game with him and Watson went down to the very last second, and the receiver for Louisville ran out of bounds at like the one yard line. If he dives for the end zone, we the uh, Clemson doesn't make the playoff that year. Yeah. They don't go undefeated. Lamar gets all the praise, and we forget about who Watson is. So much in history changes because his receiver, the talent that he had at Louisville was just trash compared to what for he's the, got. Uh, for the audience on the Winning Tours podcast, I am not in the studio with them as a referee to stand between them right now on this uh, subject. They, but they've seen this it, numerous times. They they know look, how Chris and I get. Look, I don't, don't know that Lamar, I, I don't know that Lamar Jackson is going to have a great overall year, and maybe he struggle some in this game it's it's deafening at, at arrowhead when the chiefs are, are rolling i've been there on multiple occasions the place shakes it literally shakes we'll see how he does and he played there last year that was uh the one regular season loss i believe was last year to kansas city in kansas city uh before lamar jackson in the rookie year Let's see. Let's see what it looks like on Sunday. But so far, so good for he and the uh, and the Ravens. Now let's let's talk about a home dog really quick. Yep. Sunday night football. The Rams are going to Cleveland. It's the first uh-huh. prime time game in uh-huh. a decade. Browns uh-huh. plus three right uh-huh. now. Eight. Hey, y- your boy Giannini over here is actually going to be in the stadium. I'll be there. Way way. You are on locale. O O L on location yes, in the sir. dog pound coming <laughs> for Sunday Friday. night football. Uh, look, uh, that's a game I'm looking heavily at on Three Dog Thursday on coming up on the podcast with the Browns getting points at home. I know the Jets are terrible, uh, but the Browns, the Browns defense, that front seven looked solid. We know Mayfield can sling it. Uh, the Rams got to come cross country again after an emotional tough win with the Saints. Came cross country first week with the with the uh, Panther win in Charlotte. Came all the way back home. Come across the country again for Monday Night Football. Get the extra day for the travel. But I, I am looking at this strongly for Cleveland at home for Three Dog Thursday purposes with Baker Mayfield and company back home. All right now, before we let you go, give us some other leans. What where are we looking for Three Dog Thursday? For your podcast on Thursday when we, it comes out, where uh, well, we, we mentioned at? we're looking at we're looking at the Atlanta Falcons. We mentioned them; they're getting points at Indianapolis. Chris, what do you have that at? Like two, two one and a half one here and this half. week. One and a one half. and a half, something like that. I know the Colts. Look, if the Colts could play the uh, the Titans, they every game they'd be fourteen and two every year. The thing <laughs> is, they aren't playing the Titans this week. I know it's a home opener for them after the first two on the road. Atlanta, though, with Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, I think Atlanta might be able to sneak that game. Uh, we, we'll see. That's one that I'm looking at. Uh, you, you mentioned Cam Newton, speaking of the South. You mentioned Cam Newton and the Panthers going all the way west to Arizona as a favorite off the 10-day rest. And Arizona's shown explosive offense in the first two weeks with Tyler Murray. That's another one that we're going to take a strong look at on Three Dog Thursday. And by the way, uh, the great NFL analyst, uh, Charles Davis of uh, the NFL on Fox, who worked the Dallas Cowboy game last week, their win over the Redskins. He's working the game this week, Dolphins and Cowboys. He will be a guest giving us some NFL insight on Three Dog Thursday this week, boys. Very nice. Very nice. All right, so everybody make sure, go follow him on Twitter, uh, at Buck Sideline Guy. 
Make sure you go and subscribe to the Three Dog Thursday podcast. TJ, we always appreciate you being here. We will see you again next week. I always love being with you boys. I'm hoping for another Buccaneer win against the rookie quarterback, Daniel Jones, because as you guys know, winning cures everything. I'll take back-to-back Buck wins. Thank you, boys. Absolutely. Be good, buddy. All right, we appreciate TJ for being here. Go check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast if you would. Go check out winningcureseverything.com. Go to tunicatravel.com. See all the wonderful things that Tunica, Mississippi has to offer for you. Go visit the Delta. It's a good time down there. I'm telling you, good time. All right, let's hope for some winners. Losing doesn't solve anything, but you guys know winning cures everything. We'll see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.